Ashley, I'm so happy to have you today on the... Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, it's awesome. And I'm so excited to learn more about healing crystals today with you. What actually are healing crystals? A healing crystal is generally a crystal, which is a type of mineral with a regularly repeating atomic structure. And it's thought that this regularly repeating pattern or this crystalline blueprint is the reason that healing crystals work. So because they have this perfect stable structure due to their repeating atomic pattern, when those crystals are brought into the human energy field, which isn't always so perfect or stable, mm. it's thought that the human energy field will start to mimic that perfect structure of the crystal and will sort of take on that stable vibration. Awesome. Um, so it's actually not just something that's in the mind. So it's actually something that can be scientifically proven. Is that true? My hope is that very soon um, Western medicine and science will begin to see the merit in crystal healing that's been used for thousands of years. Now, it's not just the structure of the crystal um, where the healing energy comes from. It has to be consciously directed with our thought and our intention to really be mm. effective. Otherwise, you know, you could have a very large crystal that does you no good because that energy is not consciously directed. So the other sort of piece of the puzzle is that by putting our thought intention or our healing energy um, into the crystal, that that's where we get the complete benefit from using the stones. Mm. And how does somebody actually know that a crystal is good for him or her? How does uh, somebody has to choose the right crystal? That's a good question, and most people just follow their intuition. When you are holding a crystal, how does it make you feel? Does it make you feel good? Um, does it remove pain? Does it reduce pain? How is that crystal affecting you? And many people are sensitive to energy, but some people are not. There are ways you can sort of train yourself. So the next time you are in a crystal shop, um, maybe hover your hand over a selection of different stones and see if you can pick up on the subtle energy vibration. You may find that some of the stones actually make you feel a certain way or that they actually change um, temperature. So most of the stones in the group may feel cold, but you may get to one that actually makes your hand feel a little bit warm, or it may be tingly or prickly. And it's up to you to sort of interpret these energetic um, variations, because it's very subjective. Still, that's really going to be up to you to determine. But I feel that the more practice you have, the better you'll start to be able to understand how those crystals influence your physical body. Hmm. Because I would say that probably most of the people would choose their crystal just by the color. But as I understood, this is not something which is wrong, right? Because we probably also feel attracted to the right colors that we need in our life. And, and, and like this also, the crystal can help you heal. Is that right? That's a very good point. Yes, you'll, you may find that certain colors you're drawn to um, are something that you need in your energy field at that time, whereas other colors you may not be very attracted to. Um, maybe you're doing very well in those areas of your life, or perhaps you're even repelled by a certain color, and that could be sort of a hint or a clue that that might be something that needs your attention and you may need to work on. Um, you know, some people will just choose a crystal because of pure aesthetics, you know, it, it looks beautiful and mm. it makes you happy to look at. And, you know, that's another perfectly acceptable way to choose a healing stone. Yeah. So what exactly happens if somebody, for example, gets a present uh, from a friend, which is a crystal, and uh, he even don't know anything about healing crystals, would the crystal still work for him or for her or not? Or, because you said before, it's uh, the holistic picture that somebody has to also use the mind and the thoughts to be able um, to let the healing crystal work for him or her. So when somebody don't put an intention or no thoughts in it, would the healing crystal still work then? I think on some level it still does. Now, especially if you're receiving a crystal as a gift, the person who's chosen that gift for you has put uh, the uh, vibration and energy of love into choosing that gift. Mm -hmm. Generally, we give gifts to people we like very much. So um, you'll find that you know, that crystal will carry that very positive love vibration with it as well and can work well for healing for the simple fact that it has that positive thought or love attached to it. So by bringing that sort of force of love energy into your field, it will, of course, do healing work. Now, 
the person who chose that crystal for you may not have had a specific intention in mind when they chose it. Perhaps it just reminded them of you. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, once you receive that crystal as a gift, that's where you're able to use your own intention to bring healing energy. That's a good point, yeah. Um, what I would like to know also is lately it seems that healing crystals got really popular. Um, do you think that's something positive or is it rather something negative? Because it also would mean that more crystals are taken out of the earth. And I've heard like some crystals, they put dynamite into the earth in order to get the crystals out. Now, is these crystals still good for you? Because actually they have gone through bad things like taking out uh, with uh, a lot of efforts out of the earth and with dynamite and everything. So is the crystal still good for you or is there some negative energy attached to those type of crystals? Well, to answer your first question, I think that it's always good when more people get turned on to healing crystals. Mm -hmm. I think that it's um, the way that energy medicine and healing are going, we really need to be self-advocates for our own healing. And so by learning different things about energy medicine and different holistic therapies, we're able to better be our own advocates for healing. Mm. So of course, I think from that standpoint, it is very good that many people are getting introduced to healing stones and that they're becoming a little bit more mainstream and a little bit more widely accepted. Now, the second half of that is a very good point. Um, you know, there is still a commercial and economic aspect to that and lots of mining takes place in um, different areas where it's not regulated. There are things happening like blast mining and I think what people need to be mindful of is to be conscious consumers. Make sure that you know the source of your stones, where are they coming from. Um, some crystals are very lovingly hand dug from the earth and others are blasted right out with dynamite. And that does affect the energy, in my opinion. Some people may disagree and say that, well, if you cleanse the stone enough, um, you know, you can remove that energetic vibration. But I think that on some level, that's always going to be imprinted within the stone. Mm. Um, I, I think that it, it won't necessarily affect how well the crystal works, but there will be that uh, almost negative uh, connotation with that stone. And you can work with that stone over time, and it can be turned around by being in your care and being really taken care of and well-loved. Mm -hmm. And that can really turn the energy of a crystal around. But I think that, you know, starting with a crystal that was consciously mined is the best bet. What do you think about this? Do you think you should only use one crystal or maximum two crystals at the same time? Or do you think like you can have like 10 or 20 crystals at the same time? What do you think about this? Well, you know, that's a question I get asked fairly often too. And my answer to that is typically if you're using a healing stone, again, it's very important to combine that with your intention mm -hmm. to get the maximum healing benefit. So... As many stones as you can keep clear intention for at once is the appropriate number for you. So um, you can program your stones with energy and many people believe just by simply holding the stone in front of you and visualizing what you want or need from that stone and that, that healing process that you want to take place, that will be stored within that healing stone. And so... Um, you know, by programming that stone, you have that energy sort of locked in place. Now, mm. the number of programs you can remember is the correct number of stones. So if you can remember 10 programs, you're really amazing because that's a lot. <laughs> yeah. Most of us can probably only clearly remember about three to five, somewhere in there. Yeah. Now, uh, like you stated, a lot of the healing jewelry that's coming out now has multiple stones in one piece of jewelry. You may find that you want to program that necklace or ring or whatever it may be to act as one cohesive unit. Mm -hmm. So you can actually program all of the stones in one necklace to act for one purpose. So this works very well when people especially create um, pieces of custom jewelry that combine a number of healing stones for one purpose. Awesome. Um, one more question that is uh, that I would really love to know is um, in Germany, when I told a lot of people about healing crystals and how much I love them, a lot of people looked at me and said, like, 
are you crazy now? What are you <laughs> dealing with? And and I would like to know how is it for you? Like um, when you have when you're dealing with people and you tell them your profession, how does people react on this? Are they open? Or like I'm not talking about your customers. I'm talking like ordinary people that you meet on the street or wherever you go and you talk about your profession. How they do they react on on it? You know, I think the majority of people are very open-minded and very supportive. I'm thankful that we're sort of living in a time where because of uh, things like worldwide communication, um, the message of alternative healing and holistic health is really getting out to more and more people. So I think that many people at least have an open mind to the possibility that these things may work. But of course, there are people occasionally who really don't believe in the healing power of stones at all. And, they, you know, I've had some people say, well, it's really just, you know, the placebo effect. It's mind mm -hmm. over matter. And my answer to that is, well, even if it is just your mind over matter, doesn't that still speak to the power of mind in our own healing? And mm -hmm. that's really what's important is making the changes. And if having the stone helps give you a visual cue or reminder of what you're trying to work through in your life, then, you know, is it really important whether the energy comes from within you or from within the stone? It's, it's sort of my belief that it comes from both and the stone is helping to amplify yeah. that energy. And once people sort of hear that, you know, sometimes it opens them up just a little bit more, not always, but sometimes. Mm -hmm. So it's my hope that more and more people will sort of realize the potential that healing stones really have. And what is one of your biggest success stories that you had so far in uh, using healing crystals and treating someone with a disease, may it be mentally or physically, what was your biggest success so far? Um, I, I would say I definitely have two. I had a client who was a gentleman, came to see me and was having a few very interesting symptoms. I couldn't really pinpoint um, what these combination of symptoms may be, but I wanted to treat him on an energetic level rather than treating the symptoms which he was getting treatment from his physician for. I wanted to treat the energetic cause of the symptoms. Mm. So when I scanned his energy field, I felt a very intense energy at his root chakra, something I had never felt before in anyone. And I didn't really know how to um, treat it uh, well at first because I was so unfamiliar with it. Mm -hmm. So I communicated to him what I was feeling and through some feedback from him, I came up with an approach to use a small crystal layout around the root chakra. And I said, you know, I really can't interpret what is happening here, but I sense very interesting energy. Well, he went back to his physician two days later and found out that he actually needed to have surgery for a hernia. So Ooh. that was that very intense energy that I was feeling in the area. So I'm really glad that we sort of worked through it on this energetic level so that he was able to better describe some of what he was feeling to his physician. And that's what helped with the diagnosis. Um, I also had another client who I was very lucky to be involved with a very strong, powerful group of healers. And this client had some problems with ovarian cysts. And mm -hmm. um, it seemed like a very serious surgery was going to be needed for her to clear up this problem. And through working with this group of healers over time, um, in just a matter of a few weeks, she was actually able to completely avoid surgery for these cysts. They had <sighs> almost all but disappeared. So, you know, It's sometimes even very difficult for me to believe something like that because, you know, you're working with someone, you get the reports from their physician, you know what's going on with their body, and then to see these almost miraculous changes occur really says something, but I think it takes, for something on, on that large of a scale, it really takes the right combination of a healer going in with the right mindset as well as a client or patient being open to the energy healing and really allowing their body to accept the healing to make such great changes. Mm -hmm.